Lucy, thank you so much. Um, I want to take this time to officially welcome everybody. Thank you for that introduction, Phoenix, and good afternoon and welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Stacey Schaefer, and we're going to be making um, soul food power bowls today. Um, but before we get started, there's just a few things that I wanted to show you and talk about um, for greater ease and grace in the kitchen prior to cooking and prior to actually talking about soul food, the importance of soul food, what it has historically meant, um, and why I chose to do this for Black History Month. So um, the first thing that I want to show you um, is how to season a pan, because if you read the um, instructions for this recipe, we basically use the same pan and the only thing we won't be using the same pan for is to cook shrimp, if you have shrimp, and to cook the rice in. But all of the other ingredients get cooked and then put away and then cook something else. And if you have a well-seasoned iron cast pan, which sort of acts like Teflon, but it's a much healthier version, um, without the carcinogens and grossness, um, you um, don't need to use as much oil or butter or any type of fat, which then makes your cooking a little bit healthier. So. Um, I'm not going to set myself on fire. Um, so first you heat up your pan, your iron cast skillet, and you get it warm. And then um, I pre-warmed my pan before y'all got here. So it's a little bit hot. Um, the great thing about iron skillets is that they maintain their heat and they cook evenly. So then I'm just going to take a little splash of oil here and I'm going to let the oil heat up. I'm using avocado oil. You could use olive oil, coconut oil. Just don't use extra virgin olive oil because it doesn't have a high heat point. Um, and that would not be a healthy thing to do. So when the oil starts to spread out and you know it's warm, um, you just take a towel and you rub the oil around, spreading it evenly all across the pan. And what happens is that that sort of creates a seal and it's really, um, it acts like Teflon and your food doesn't stick to the surface of the pan, which is really amazing. So seasoning a pan. The other thing I like to show people is this is a wet micro cloth. You could use a wet paper towel, a kitchen towel, whatever you prefer. Um, and I'm gonna just move my cutting board and place the towel down like so. And then place my cutting board back on top. And what happens is it prevents the cutting board from moving as you're chopping, which is really important because if you're doing a lot of chopping, dicing, mincing, you don't want your cutting board to move because that's how you are definitely going to hurt yourself with a knife. Um, and especially if you're using um, a cutting board with young people, really good to have that extra stability when cooking with them in the kitchen. Um, and the last little thing I wanted to talk about is yellow rice, because we will be making yellow rice, but we will be making yellow rice from scratch. It's very tempting to go out and buy one of these, a nice, easy, boxed up rice, right? However, the ingredients in this, half of them I can't even pronounce, properly. Um, and one of the key ingredients is um, monosodium glutamate, which causes headaches and other fantastic things. It's a preservative. Um, it's not healthy to eat. Um, what they do with this rice is they take out all of the nutritional content and then they artificially add it back in. Um, and the sodium content in this per serving is 690 milligrams. So not the healthiest option. So I just wanted to share that, that it's much easier to buy turmeric, which is a spice, is a little bit earthy, um, but will make your rice yellow and then also provide you with anti-inflammatory properties and help with digestion and all of those other wonderful things um, and circulation that curcumin, which is the ingredient in turmeric, does. So that's all I have to say about that. And now I'm just gonna take a brief moment to talk about soul food. Um, I don't know if anybody read the blurb that I wrote, but um, soul food is a Southern food. It is a traditional, you know, mesh and mashup of Western African 
cuisines and foods and spices. And, you know, when we were brought over here, um, one of the things that we could share because we were separated as families um, is food and is our tradition of food. And that tradition of food has continued over hundreds and hundreds of years, just like storytelling has, right? And you just pass it down from generation to generation. So when I cook soul food, I um, am very conscientious of honoring the shoulders that I am standing upon and the people who have fought for my right to be here um, and to honor them. So it holds a special place in my heart and it's also super delicious. Traditionally though, um, a lot of soul food has additives and a lot of fat and a lot of fried and a lot of battered and um, all of those things. We won't be doing that today. Um, we'll be using things like water or broth or minimal oils and less processed oils um, instead of lard and things like that um, in the food to make it a healthier uh, choice. So um, with that said, um, you got your nutrients list, so I'm not necessarily going to go over that because this is a, um, a multi-tiered cooking experience, and I want to be able to get to the cooking. Uh, so, um, and maybe I'll touch on some of those nutrient components as we go. So what I'd first like to start with is the rice. So when making yellow rice, you can use what you would traditionally use to make rice, which is water. I like to use a chicken broth or a veggie broth or a, you know, a seafood stock, whatever kind of broth you have, because it just lends itself flavor to the rice. Um, so I'm just gonna take my already measured um, two cups of organic chicken broth here that I'm gonna put in. Um, and then, as I go off camera for a brief moment, I'm going to add butter. So when you're making yellow rice and you follow a traditional recipe, it will often say add two to three tablespoons of butter, oil, fat. Um, I'm just gonna put one in, because I really think that that's all we need, um, is one tablespoon. And then the recipe also calls for some fresh minced garlic. So I have already peeled my garlic. So I'm just gonna take two garlic cloves because it is cold in flu season and I don't want any of that. So I'm just going to, instead of measuring it out because who has time for that, I'm just gonna use two garlic cloves and call it done. Um, when scooping up ingredients with a knife, always use the dull part of the knife, not the blade, because then you're messing up your blade and you don't want to do that. This recipe also calls for um, one teaspoon of onion powder. I don't have onion powder at home, so what I chose to do was just finely mince up some onion. And that's what I'm gonna throw in here because it's the real thing. And I'd rather the real thing anyway. Um, and then you have one teaspoon ground turmeric. So the night before I do these cooking classes, I always cook the recipe so that I can tweak things and talk to you about it today. So yesterday, because I didn't read the recipe, I just threw in a tablespoon of turmeric. And let me just say, that the rice was incredibly rich in its yellow tone. However, it was very earthy. So um, I was like, ooh, we have to lessen that to like maybe two teaspoons or something. But the recipe actually calls for one teaspoon of ground turmeric, which is more than enough to make your rice yellow. I put in the two cups of chicken broth. I'm not going to add salt because I used chicken broth and chicken broth is usually salted. So I don't want extra sodium added in. And then the ground black pepper to taste, I'm just gonna take a little pinch here and throw it in. So now I'm gonna crank the heat and find the top to this pan in my crazy drawer here. Um, 
let that come to a boil, and then I'm gonna put my simmer, put it on my simmer burner. Um, once we add the rice for about 15 to 20 minutes. So um, yellow rice is done. And so in the interim, we'll prepare on all of the other stuff. So I'm gonna move my fan this way and I'm gonna move this handle this way so that we don't have any accidents to speak of. So the next thing we're gonna do is get the collard greens ready. So this recipe calls for four collard green leaves. Um, this is a little tiny one. So I have like five or six in here. I also really like greens. Um, so the stem that goes down the middle here, a lot of people remove. So all you need to do is fold it in half and then cut that out. I actually really like it because it has nutrients and it adds a specific texture. Um, I like a little crunch and bite. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just fold all of the collard greens that I've stacked on top of each other into like a little roll like that. And then I'm gonna take my knife and using the bear claw so you don't chop your fingers, right? I'm just gonna cut it thinly all the way across. So this is called a chiffonade. And in French, that means like ribbon. So to ribbon, so you're gonna get this nice ribbon of collard green. Um, and then if you want, which is what I do, um, is I'll take the long, you know, strips and I'll cut them in half so that it's more um, palatable to eat, right? Because when you eat and you're eating with friends and family or whatever, or you're hosting something, you don't want people to have like a green chip knotted piece of collard green hanging out of their mouth. Um, so next we're going to put the water, a third of a cup of water, three chopped garlic cloves, and the collard greens into the iron cast skillet. Um, so the water is what's going to help um, cook the collard greens. And then after they've cooked for about, I don't know, five, six minutes, and they're this beautiful, bright, rich green, then what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of olive oil to it and saute it a little bit. And we'll do that for a few more minutes thereafter. Um, in traditional soul food cooking, greens are super overcooked in my humble opinion. I really like to see the color of the food that I eat. I like bright green greens, um, not the sort of muted color of traditional collard greens um, that you can have. So um, we're not gonna cook ours for as long. Um, I like all of my food al dente into the bite, including my vegetables. So, um, a garlic press saves in the long run hours and hours of your life. Um, so I highly recommend that if there is one kitchen tool that you would like to utilize, I would have it be the garlic press. And then here's the collard greens. So we're just going to put those in. When you're placing anything into a skillet that is hot, Make sure that you're putting your hands and the ingredients as close to the pot, the surface of the pot as possible. What we often do is get scared of heat and we hold things up, up here and throw it in and then all of the oil or water splatters back at us. So we don't want that. So I have this on my power burner and now it is done. It's at a roiling boil here. So I'm just gonna take my rice and I'm using white rice. I am one of those freaky people who can't eat brown rice. It totally upsets my stomach. So I'm using white rice. Has less nutritional content, has less um, insoluble fiber, and less vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Um, but it's what my body likes. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, and then what I like to do is give it a quick stir. So all of those ingredients mixed together. And then I never touch my rice thereafter because one doesn't do that. Um, I don't know if you can, hold on. 
see this per se. There you go. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous yellow color, right? So um, I'm now going to put this on the back, on low, the simmer burner, and get that going. Um, I'm going to turn this on here so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, and uh, did you see me do that to test the handle because iron cast skillets can get super, super hot and I don't want anyone burning themselves. So we're just going to saute this through um, and it will become a wonderful bright green. If you want to expedite the process, you can take the lid to a pan and do that and then it will help the vegetables steam through. So while we have the collard greens cooking here, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna start prepping for the um, tomato and the okra. So the recipe calls for a pound of okra, if I am correct. A pound of trimmed okra is a heck of a lot of okra. Okra is not currently in season, it is a summer crop. So I'm sure that if you are using the okra, okra you got it in the frozen food section. The bags come in 16 ounce bags. Last night when I did this recipe, I used half the bag, so eight ounces of the frozen okra. Um, so this is the other half. The recipe also says that you're supposed to divide all of this in two bowls. That is an inordinate portion. I fed my entire family of four on this specific recipe last night. So it serves four. So divide it into four bowls, um, or if you're two people, two bowls and then save the rest as leftovers. Um, so the okra is already trimmed and ready to go. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, and we need the tomato. So here's the tomato. I, when I cut tomatoes, like to use um, a serrated knife. If your knives aren't inordinately sharp and like that would mean sharpening them literally like every time you use them after you use them, Using a serrated knife is really helpful because you get a much cleaner cut. So this just goes into the chicken bowl. Um, and then I just cut it in half this way and then do it along this way um, into little rainbows as it were, and then this way. This is gonna cook down. Um, so you don't really have to care about what your mincing, dicing, slicing looks like. Um, that's not the point. Um, the point is deliciousness and healthy food. Um, so that's all set and ready to go. This is now beautifully cooked down. Most of the water has evaporated. What I really like about this is that the garlic, you can still taste the garlic. So if you then saute this for many, many, many more minutes, the, um, the garlic will begin to brown. And so the moment you smell that sort of like nutty garlic smell or flavor, like it's roasted, you want to get the collard greens out because you don't want the garlic to burn because burnt garlic is bitter and is no one's friend. So what I did last night and what we'll do today is I have a cute little plate. I'm going to put it here and everything that cooks, I put on the plate and then um, you can cover it to keep it warm until everything else is cooked. Um, to save time, what we're going to do now is just remove this from the skillet. And some people would say these greens aren't cooked. I actually think they're perfect and this is how I would serve mine anyway. Um, so I'm just going to take um, do you like my retro oven mitt? My mother-in-law's. It's awesome. Um, so here are all of these delicious collard greens. And then I'm not going to bother scraping out my plant, you know, my pan or getting all worked up about that because 
when everything gets put into the bowl, it's all gonna get mixed up anyway. So now next step is adding a little bit more olive oil and then the tomato. So I'm using avocado oil. You can use coconut oil. Um, the thing about coconut oil is that um, it has a high burn point, but it does have a coconutty um, flavor. So I prefer avocado oil. So just a little bit. It says add a tablespoon. I added a splash. I'm not gonna measure everything. Um, the only time I measure lots of things is when I bake because that's more of a science. This you can improvise with. So again, this has liquid in it. My skillet is hot, so I'm gonna hold everything low, right? So what we're gonna do is cook those down. We're gonna add some of the spices. And then once we're done, once they cook down in a few minutes, we are going to cook the okra. So I'm gonna just check on the rice here. It's simmering and doing its thing. Um, one of the things that I also like to add is when you're in your kitchen, we have the propensity to get comfortable and not wear proper shoes, not wear socks, go barefoot. If you're cooking with hot things, if you're doing something like this, where you go from pan to table, pan to table, um, having to Betsy something falls, you always want to have shoes on. So always wear shoes when you cook food, um, unless you're cooking something that doesn't require heat. Um, so now we have the tomato in there and, um, we're gonna break it down. I'm actually now going to add some seasoning. So I'm gonna add some sea salt, some crushed red pepper. If you do not like crushed red pepper, you can add some black pepper, or if you don't like pepper at all, you don't have to have it in there. Um, I have this awesome salt holder. So it holds two different varieties. So I have a Himalayan sea salt and I have a kosher salt. So um, I like things that are pink, so I'm gonna just do a little pinch of salt here. And then I have all of my spices here, so I'm just gonna do a pinch of red pepper flakes here. This is breaking down nicely, so I am going to add my okra. I don't know if anybody here has experience with okra. Lisa, if you're here, I know you do. Um, so here's the thing about okra. It can get gross. So you, and like gelatinous and weird. So, and that usually happens when it's overcooked. So what I like to do is take it out a little bit early because it will continue to cook up to 10 more degrees so that um, that doesn't happen. Um, for those of you who have never tried okra, um, texturally, it's really interesting. So um, the outside is different, the seeds are different, the seeds are a specific shape and texture. Um, I find it to be a really um, fun food to eat. And both of my children love it, which I think is nothing short of a miracle. Um, so, and I added enough pepper flakes. I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper and a little bit more salt just because we added the okra in. Um, I don't like to measure salt because what happens with that is you have less control over it. So I would rather incrementally add salt and herbs and spices to food, taste it, and then add more instead of saying, oh, this calls for a teaspoon, let me pour the whole thing in because then it might be too sodium rich. Um, So the tomatoes are breaking down beautifully. The okra is starting to get a richer green color. Um, and in another few minutes, I'll probably taste it and put it with the collard greens. So today what I decided to do is to cook both types of proteins because I, um, the recipe calls for shrimp and it calls for black eyed peas. I made it with black eyed peas yesterday, um, and today I'm gonna do the black eyed peas and the shrimp, just so that you can get a taste or you know, a sense of it. Um, but while we wait for this to continue cooking, I'm gonna take my already peeled sweet potato, 
um, and get that ready. So with the sweet potato, um, the smaller you cut it, the quicker it will cook. So, um, and this recipe does not call for adding any water or broth to the skillet. It's more of a um, sauteed sweet potato. But when my kids were asking me last night, mom, when's dinner? You better believe that I threw some water up in there and cooked those sweet potatoes in like three minutes instead of seven. Um, so I also, I'm gonna cut them small. If you have finicky eaters, um, cutting things like sweet potatoes or okra smaller, um, I think they'll like them. They're more apt to try them um, because they're less intimidating. So um, here's the sweet potato. Um, which is our next step. We have time. So what I am going to do now is um, deal with the shrimp, which is right behind me. Here's the shrimp. So I have Meyer lemons. Meyer lemons are different than regular lemons. They are richer um, in yellow hue and tone. They are also sweeter um, and less acidic. And when you turn them into lemonade, you don't have to add any dyes or preservatives because the lemon juice is this beautiful yellow color. So I drink that throughout the day. So I'm gonna take the juice of one lemon and pour that over the shrimp. I'm gonna season it with a little salt and pepper and red pepper flakes and call it a day. So the great thing about lemon juice is that it kills bacteria. It helps kill bacteria, which is why they use lemon and lime juice and things like ceviche. It also helps cook it, right? So this is done. Oprah. Um, your ovens and cooktops might be different than mine at home. So I recommend tasting it, seeing what you like, and if it needs more time, use more time. So for this one, I'm going to throw on some kosher sea salt. I mean, some kosher salt, not sea salt. Um, some pepper flakes, a little pepper, and then I'm just going to um, use these spoons. There was a question that came up about, um, is there a reason why you skinned the uh, sweet potato? Uh, we usually eat the skins is the, is the question from Marie and Donna Marie. The question, that's a good question. Um, and it is fine <laughs> to eat the skin. Um, the skins on the sweet potato weren't particularly nice, so I peeled it. I also have a finicky eater who does not eat things with the skins on, which is why I peel them, because this will be lunch. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to make sure that they eat it. Um, that's it. So now, because there are so many nutrients to be found in the skin, so yes. Um, if I was cooking this just for myself, it would be skins on. So I'm going to just transfer this to this plate here. And already it looks beautiful. And the other thing about cooking this way, if you have a family and they all have their own wants and needs around food, is that then it's like a buffet and they can choose what they want to put in their bowl um, and spare the drama around, oh, I don't want to eat that, blah, 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 because right? that can become a pain. Um, so again, so now I am going to hit the, um, I'm gonna quickly actually go out of order and I am going to do um, the black eyed peas, okay? Um, simply because that makes more sense and then I don't have to have honey and cinnamon in my skillet, which I don't want to be on my black eyed peas. So this recipe um, doesn't include the black eyed peas, but I basically cook the black eyed peas like I would cook the shrimp. So you can 
substitute in the ingredients that way. Um, and I also feel like, so here we go. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to the pan. And if you want, you could put water, broth, whatever. If you wanna use less oil, less fat, you can do that. I'm gonna throw my peas in here. Um, they have been strained and rinsed, right? If you do not rinse your beans, um, it lends itself to some flatulence, which, you know, might not be fun for those around you. So I always really like to rinse the beans. Um, here is more of the lemon. So I'm just gonna squeeze some more lemon. I'm also gonna check on the rice. So one of the ways to tell if rice is done is that you will see these little holes that pop up, these little air pockets um, in the rice. And that means that most of the water has been absorbed, which I like, because I don't like watery rice. And then I'm just gonna taste it really quickly to make sure that it actually is done. Um, And it is. So what I do so that I don't burn my rice is I turn the rice off. I keep it covered for another five minutes or until this is done. Um, and then usually all of that steam cooks the rice even further. And then you have perfectly cooked rice. All of the grains are sort of separate. It, it doesn't clump together and look weird. Um, so even professionals make mistakes. So what I will say is that the collard greens, excuse me, are supposed to have onions. Um, I forgot to saute the onions and have them in there, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some onions in here. And then I'm gonna put some onions in the shrimp because that's how I roll. And we can call it a day. Um, and I can also tell you that my kids are more apt to eat collard greens without onions because they don't like onions. Um, so in order to get these onions to cook better, instead of browning them, I'm just going to add a little bit of water. When you add water, it's called, or wine or broth or whatever, you're deglazing the pan. So all of the delicious flavors that we've cooked are now coming into the beans, which is fantastic. And, the water will also soften the onions so that you don't have such a bite, you know, that allium spiciness. I'm gonna cover this so that it continues to cook. Then we're gonna put that on this plate, cook our sweet potatoes, and then quickly, quickly saute shrimp. Shrimp is a matter of texture and taste. I personally cook my shrimp a couple of minutes on each side and I'm done. Like the second it turns pink, we're good. There are a lot of people who really like to cook their shrimp more. And then, you know, the shrimp curls up, it's super tiny and it's um, a little bit tougher, but it's like completely 100% cooked through. Um, it's all a question of what type of texture you like. Clearly for the parents out there who are allergic to shellfish, they wouldn't be using this in their recipe, right? Because that would be dangerous. Um, so this is at a beautiful like simmer, which I like. The onions are cooking down. Our sweet potatoes are ready to roll. Does anybody, while we wait for all of these things to cook, um, have any questions for me as we move forward? No. Um, so I'm going to say now that our black eyed peas are done. And I think there's enough room on this little, little plate um, <laughs> for the black eyed peas. The shrimp and the sweet potato will have to go on another plate. So here are the black eyed peas. I love black eyed peas. Um, to me, they're like a jazzier version.
version of a lima bean and like a little less starchy. And when cooked well, um, it, they're like butter that melts in your mouth. And it's just a delicious thing. I'm getting hungry. Usually my dog. You're getting hungry? Yes, I am. So thank you. You're, you're welcome. You're rather luscious and, and I'm a texture sensitive. So me and okra, we have a, a complicated relationship. So. so this is what it looks like oops, so far, right? Just really beautiful. Lots of different textures and colors. Um, just gonna do that. Um, all right, so here come the sweet potatoes. So a little dab of oil, not much. I think the recipe calls for like three or four tablespoons because for each time you're clearing the pan, you're putting a tablespoon in, so not necessary. Um, <clears throat> then I'm gonna put some water in, because water is my friend. Then I'm gonna throw these sweet potatoes in. Sweet potato is really good for people who have um, digestive issues. It promotes gut health. Um, really soothing for folks with IBS or acid reflux. Really good food to have on hand. Um, so also babies like it because it's sweet without any added sugar. So for the sweet potatoes, we are then going to put some sea salt and cinnamon in. So here's some sea salt, just a smidge and some cinnamon. So the recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So let me find half a teaspoon. Apologies for the noise. Everything in here is stainless steel. Um, there you go. And then it also calls for honey, but we're going to cook everything through first um, and then add the honey. So I'm gonna let that come to a boil and do its thing. And while that's cooking, we're gonna quickly do the shrimp. So yeah. just getting another plate here. Um, so we're gonna get this pan nice and hot. If you want it to be decadent, you could add butter, right? Butter and shrimp. Mm -hmm. Yum, right? If you want to be on the healthier side, you can use an olive oil or avocado oil, something like that, coconut oil. Um, or you could mix it up and do like half butter, half oil. Um, or if you were on a no fat thing, right, then you could add raw, right? Either one would work. Um, for today, I'm just going to be using, I'm going to stick with avocado oil because it's right here. Um, And so the shrimp has sort of been marinated. If you want it to be fancy, you could marinate your shrimp um, for several hours or overnight to really give it an extra zhuzh of flavor, um, or you don't have to, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna waste these onions, so I'm gonna put the onions in here with the shrimp. Um, This is coming to a really nice boil. So I'm just gonna stir this around a little bit. In another minute or two, I'll take out a handy dandy fork and pierce the sweet potato to see how it's doing. Um, and then you add the honey. So using local honey is really important, especially as we segue into spring. Thank you, thank you. Um, because it helps with allergies, right? Because the bees that are pollinating are pollinating on the things that we're all allergic to. So if we're using local honey, it's sort of homeopathic response, where like cures like, um, and it makes us less sensitive to the environmental allergens that prompt our allergies in the first place. Um, so I have some raw local honey up here from Bee Hollow. Um, however, I'm going to be using not local honey. 
simply because um, it's easy to pour um, and that honey is crystallized and makes things a little bit more challenging. So, the tail ends of the shrimp, by the way, when you're done eating them, you can rinse them off chuck them in a small mason jar, put them in the freezer. And if you're gonna make any type of fish stock, you can use them for that. So two minutes aside, you know, and then you flip. Um, the water is starting to evaporate as the sweet potatoes um, absorb the water. And the water cooks off. Let's see what we're doing here. So this needs a few more minutes. So I'm just going to cover that up. And now I'm going to peruse the recipe to make sure I didn't forget anything else. Um, and I don't think that I have. Um, and then this is the bowl that I would use because it's a white bowl and it highlights white dishware highlights the foods um, and brings out their color. So I'm gonna show you how I would plate it if I were serving myself or my family um, and what I would like it to look like. And I just wanna show y'all this. Look, it's scallions that I bought from the store. And then once I was done with them, I put the little roots in some water and now I have all of this green new growth because it started off just as the whites. So um, you don't necessarily need to get a huge hydroponic system. You can just do something like this and magically grow your own scallions, um, which I will cut with a scissor and use as a garnish at the end. So if you look, these are sort of starting to become translucent on the top and they're pink on the bottom. Um, so I'm just gonna flip them. And if you, you know, don't feel comfortable flipping them like that, then you can flip them, you know, one by one. These are done. Um, or if you don't have nerve endings in your hands, like I do after years of um, catering and cooking, you can also do it that way, or you can take a fork, right? and do it that way, whatever you feel comfortable with um, is what you should do. So, there we are. I turned off the wrong burner. So I'm gonna cover this up so that it cooks evenly through and through. I'm going to add a little bit of honey. And what I do with this, I just drizzle it, right? And then mix it through. Because there's nothing like sweet potatoes with honey and cinnamon. And so, I'm going to put the sweet potatoes over here on another plate while we wait for the shrimp. And then you can also take your rice and, um, these are pans where the stainless steel pans where um, the handles don't get hot. So I'm not like a superhero. These don't get hot. And then um, here's some of the rice. My perfectly yellow and delicious. And then I would take one of my homegrown scallions, um, just to give um, the rice a little hit of color. 
And I love using a scissor to do this because then you don't have to deal with a cutting board or this or that. You just cut it up nicely on the bias so it has a good shape. And then you have some extra greenery out there. And in another few days, that will work. So, these look beautifully cooked through to me, right? Very nice. They're gonna have a beautiful texture. And so, because I always like to think of people and their specific dietary needs, I would never put um, any fish, chicken, any type of animal protein mixed together with the vegetables because you never know what people like or don't like or what they eat or don't eat or what they're allergic to. Um, so I would just put these in a little bowl, almost like a side dish. Get all of those nice onions that were meant for the collard greens, but now we're in the shrimp and the black eyed peas just because. Um, and so these are all the fixings for the soul food power bowl. There's okra. And so the way I did this yesterday was that I left out all of the accoutrements, right? So, oh, and I'm gonna put, this is some um, lemon pepper seasoning for the shrimp, yum. And I might even do a little bit on the rice. Okay, and then you get all of your serving utensils out. Um, I'm just gonna use one, cause it's just me that I'm serving. Um, but when I do this for my family, each little thing has its own serving utensil so that nobody has to, cross contaminate or worry that the yucky yellow rice touched the sweet potatoes, blah, blah, blah. So um, I would take some yellow rice, followed by some sweet potato. And one thing that I'd also like to point out is that the more colors you have in your diet and in each meal, the more nutrients you're getting, right? Because um, Every color has its own vibration. Every color has its own set of nutrients, um, right? Like orange things are usually high in antioxidants and beta carotene. Um, from an energetic perspective, yellow foods are really great for your solar plexus chakra. Um, and that's how you get your will out into the world and do things. Um, so then I would have some black eyed peas. And you can take a lot of black eyed peas because there's so much. Um, and then the delicious collard greens. And whenever I serve myself greens, I always make sure that um, on my plate, greens take up a lot of space. Um, it's just my way of knowing that I'm getting one to two cups of greens at each meal. Um, Cause I try to eat anywhere from six to nine cups of greens a day, which sounds excessive, um, but it's what my body likes. And then you have the okra. Right? And then for me, because I am a shrimp lover, I would place my protein. And you can put any type of protein, right? Like if you're vegan, you could use tofu. If you were an omnivore, you could use chicken or pork or whatever. It doesn't really matter. So, um, or like a fish filet. Um, and then I put like three, either three or five pieces of shrimp because chefs do everything in odd numbers. That's what you're taught in culinary school. Even numbers don't usually look as nice on a plate or so I've been told. So and there you have a very delicious, go this way, delicious soul food power bowl. Um, and so I'm super excited to eat lunch. Um, and that's about it. That's all she wrote. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments, concerns um, that they want to throw my way this afternoon? 
It looks delicious. It looks delicious. <laughs> looks great. Looks delicious. Well, I hope it tastes as delicious as it looks. It passed the family test last night and there are finicky phyllises. So hopefully um, you all enjoy it too. Um, and when you do eat it, if you have been cooking with me or if you've been watching and you'll cook it later, um, before you eat it, just take a moment to um, honor the shoulders and the the, the folks that walked before us so that we have such delicious recipes and foods to eat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you so much. Stacy, thank you. You crushed this, this was awesome. Um, oh. I have a question. I, I did cook along with you, so I feel like I missed uh, the lemon juice. What, did you add that or, or do you add that at the end? Cause I still have mine out. I missed, I didn't put it in anything. I added the lemon juice to both the black eyed peas and okay. the shrimp. Okay, I will add that now. Um, yeah. I had another question. Do you have a favorite mincer that you, uh, I mean, garlic crusher that you use? Cause I had one for years and then I got rid of it cause it got kind of yucky. Um, so they always get gross. Okay. And, so, and so one of the things that I've just come to terms with is that my garlic press will be gross. Um, okay. <laughs> They sell like these crazy things that are supposed to help the garlic come out. They're useless. It doesn't okay. work. They're usually, the prongs are usually too short to get all of yeah. the remnants out. Um, so what I do is I just, I do an after soak and I soak my garlic press. Oh, okay. And then usually what happens, like my faucet um, does a little like shower stream. Yes. Yeah. And so I put it on full blast, super hot after soaking it. And that usually gets all the, the gross stuff out. Okay, great. Um, my other question was, when do you decide to use kosher salt versus uh, the, you know, the Himalayan sea salt or sea salt? So I think that in terms of taste, kosher sea salt is like bolder. Okay. Um, and it also is bigger. So if I wanted to serve something where like I wanted people to see the salt, I would use kosher salt. Okay. Himalayan sea salt has more nutrients in it. Um, and um, so I would use that for, um, I use that to sprinkle on my food if it needs more salt. And I also use it in stops, broths, things that simmer um, because <laughs> I feel like the salt also helps um, soak out the nutrients from the food that it's cooked in. Okay. Um, making things more digestible and, um, you know, assimilated into the body when you eat. Okay, great, thank you. And lastly, I do wanna say, I didn't get okra because the only experience I've had with okra was in St. Croix and I was so excited to try it. And I ordered it twice and I just couldn't, it was so slimy. So going forward, now I know that it was just overcooked and I will give it a try based on your, you know, recommendation to just- Based on me eating it right in front of you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's the only vegetable I don't like, like literally. Um, so, but I will talking. stay open. I don't know if you eat fried food, right? But the way I introduce my children to okra, we have a Cuisinart air fryer, okay? So I breaded everything in gluten-free breadcrumbs and um, put it in the air fryer. And then you never have to worry about using oils, number one, but also right. being like gelatinous. Weird. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will, I'll have to try it. And try um, it in the summer. Um, who are they? Low Farm, which used to be at Talia Farrow Farm on Plains Road in Newport, and now has relocated to Catskill, but will be coming over the summer and um, spring, summer, fall months on Wednesdays to New Paltz, um, they make, they grow the most extraordinary okra. Mm, okay. So keep your eye out I'll, for that. I'll keep an eye out. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. I oh. had such a great time. This was such a treat. And now my dinner is cooked for tonight, which I'm very excited about. So there you go. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Wonderful. Thank you again and wish you all a wonderful day. And thank you so much, Stacey.
You're welcome. Thanks for coming, everybody. Great to come with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye.